my name is Cindy Johnson, and I am the owner of Johnson & Johnson Creative Content, which is a documentary and corporate videography business. And um, I'm super thrilled to be part of the, this film festival with my latest documentary, my short doc, which is, um, uh, it's called To Be Fair. And it covers uh, the journey of a performance artist who went all around Wisconsin uh, performing a piece called uh, Is This Fair? And the topic of Is This Fair uh, is the Electoral College and the National Popular Vote, which is um, a topic near and dear to my heart as someone who cares about democracy and America. Well, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And again, super excited to be part of the Milwaukee International Film Fest Shorts Film Festival. Uh, it looks like a great lineup and I cannot wait to watch all the other films in the in the festival as well. It would be a pleasure to meet you at the festival uh, next month. Yes. Let's talk about your career a little bit here uh, before we get into your film. I got your bio up. It says that you've been making films for 10 years. You focus mostly on documentaries than the narrative, right? Correct. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't do any feature work whatsoever. My background is um, I'm a print journalist, was in uh, uh, daily newspapering for, gosh, more than 20 years in St. Paul and uh, most recently in Milwaukee before I left newspapers. And so, um, you know, telling those real authentic stories is really near and dear to my heart. And so that's how I got into documentary filmmaking. So you were a print journalist. What made you decide to be a filmmaker? Yeah, so um, writing and editing and telling stories that way has always been like, you know, my, my life's career and times just got really, really tough for newspapers, um, even starting in the eighties. And I could see that the pressures were gonna just continue to get worse and worse. And um, I was at a time in my life and my career where I thought, you know, I need to make a change and I wanted to be able to continue making stories. And so, um, yeah, the newspaper I actually worked for told everyone to learn videography and because websites were developing at the time. And so I had always done photo as well as writing. And it was just another way to sort of expand my skill set. And so, yeah, that's how I got into quote unquote filmmaking. It was really through videography. And um, and then I was inspired to, to do something longer than just sort of a short piece for the newspaper, so. Oh, that's wonderful. You start seeing journalists being their own photographers. You start seeing them being their own videographers. You, like newspapers today, pretty much cut out photojournalists and just had journalists kind of take over that area? Or is it just a combination of skills that people wanted to learn to continue I mean, to on? Be, to be totally candid, it, it was a cost-saving measure. And yeah, the newspapers uh, wanted to expand into videography. And so most of the photojournalists also learned that skill as well. But then yeah. as time has gone on, newspaper staffs has, have been shrinking and shrinking. And yeah, unfortunately, the ranks of photojournalists um, have really taken a huge hit. And it's, it's a super shame because as everyone knows, um, the more you're able to delve deeply into a certain skill set, I mean, the photos that photojournalists take can be vastly superior to, to you know, to some ones that someone who, who is uh, more focused on the words of a yeah. project to care about. So yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I think most of it was a downsizing issue and out of necessity. Yeah, I've I've even seen um, television reporters be their own like sort of camera person they they're the ones that put up the tripod they set up the camera now and they talk directly in it 
then yeah. wrap, then strike everything up and they don't really have cameramen so much on yeah TV yeah stage. so yeah not my preferred methodology to be honest yeah. a team a team tends to do a much better job <laughs> and you had a team with this film didn't you 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 had a director of photography i assume and and you also had probably researchers and all that together working on this film um actually no <laughs> oh <laughs> so uh I, i'm the primary shooter for this film um i did have a couple of people help me with a little bit when um when i felt that it was more important for me to be observing but no um you know the 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 documentaries that i make are real are very personal and I tend to want to shoot them myself because I want to be able to go when I want to go. And also um, most of my documentaries are self-funded. And so hiring crew obviously can get very expensive. And so I tend to try to be very, um, uh, very careful about those things. So yeah, basically I would say in, in especially with uh, To Be Fair, it, very much a, a very very small crew how many people besides you sometimes so i did i did primary shooting i would say 95 percent of it um you know all the audio all the editing oh, and wow. all and all the research but my journalism background really allows me to do that and i produced this film over the course of two years as i was shooting it and so that really helped me stretch out a lot of what the you know, the back end of, of a documentary is. Let's talk about your subject, uh, Peggy yeah. Christensen. I knew of her quite oh. a bit and cause she's a fixture in Milwaukee here. And I think in your film, there's a moment where she takes off a jacket and she's wearing a t-shirt that says TV sucks. I, I think I was actually in one of her performances watching that too. Were, that's amazing yeah i i remember that performance vividly um wow so yeah she's kind of a, a fixture in this city here i mean she's so, kind of ahead. well known in the art circles yes and so peggy was someone that i didn't even know existed well that's not true so i did know of her existence at the newspaper at the milwaukee journal sentinel because she was part of a group of people involved in the arts that helped, um, I guess, write some commentary uh, for a column called Art City that was um, part of the art critic, uh, Mary Louise Schumacher's role yeah. at the newspaper. And so Mary Louise knew her very well. And um, I had finished my last documentary and Mary Louise and I worked at the paper together. And I said, you know, I really wanna, I would love to, you know, focus on another art person. And she's like, I know a great person who is, who just launched a really interesting kind of quiet project that, you know, I find fascinating. And so she introduced me to Peggy and then I got to know Peggy who is just, you know, an amazing person. And once I met her and I got to know her project, that was it. I knew that that was the, the next documentary that I wanted to take on. How long was the process making this? Did you say two years? It was about two, I wanna say just a little over two years. So Peggy's project originally was to do uh, her performance piece. She called it an interventional performance piece about the national popular vote compact, which would affect the electoral college. Mm -hmm. And she wanted that project to go on for just about a year. And then she wanted to end it when um, the uh, Democratic National Convention was supposed to have occurred in Milwaukee. Well, as we all know, the pandemic scrapped that. And so she retooled her project a bit and wanted to uh, keep it going for a, a little bit longer. And so I ended up, yeah, following her until the completion of it. When did you finish? So um, I finished the film in February of this year. Okay. Yeah, and I think that's about when you sent it to me too, if I recall. 
it could be. Yeah. Um, and so, um, principal shooting for it ended on, um, <laughs> I want to say like, uh, uh, around the election, around the election of 2021. Now, now, Peggy's been a performance artist in this city for a number of years, and I was kind of surprised how deep of a dive some of your clips are in, in in her past work. Did she supply that, or did you have to go research them and, and find them? Yeah, so it was a combination. Most of her performance, um, the, the the performances, she gave me links to, and then I would watch um, you know her performances and sort of pick the pieces that I felt were were um, illustrative of her impact in Milwaukee and her deep connection and um, yeah and and to be honest her the the project that is probably nearest and dearest to her heart is um, my vote performs which was a huge effort in 2008 where she had um, gosh I want to say it was like. 14 or 18 performance arts groups performing at different polling places, which is um, was a hard effort to get together and then actually have happen because in, in Wisconsin, we have very strict campaigning laws and she had to uh, appeal to the Wisconsin Election Commission to you know, say that this is art. It's not politics. We just want to celebrate voting and 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 have that be part and have art and and voting you know come together. So we're going to premiere your film in September. Uh, are you just starting your festival run now? So I started um, applying for festivals in February. We've been accepted to seven of them, including yours. And I think the farthest one away um, was the Independence Festival in uh, South Carolina. And I have about 12 more submissions out there, primarily Midwest and Wisconsin, because I feel like Peggy's story, while it is a national story, I do believe that it has a lot of resonance for people in Wisconsin to be able yeah. to see. Well, and then after the festival run, my hope is to share the project with the National Popular Vote Organization and see if it's appropriate for their their efforts and um, and any other groups that really would want to see sort of the the intersection of art and um, and politics. Well, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Super excited to come to the film festival. Can't wait to see all the great work. Well, thank you again. Thank you.